So this presentation's topic is magic words. Um, it's about words. And that words carry real power. We should be careful in how we're using them. Um, so hopefully this presentation brings some awareness, the need for caution when we use our power. Our power. <laughs> words carry real power, which can be both useful and dangerous to ensure best results and to avoid hazardous situations, please consult your user's manual. Does anyone know what your user's manual is called? A dictionary, yes. I saw someone mouth it. <laughs> yeah, don't be afraid to use a dictionary, people. It's not just meant for children, it's meant for us all. You know the saying, sticks and stones, So you do know. I hope to convince you otherwise tonight. <laughs> so every word has a sound, right or wrong, okay? And or a spell of its own, right or wrong. Okay, don't be, don't be shy, you know. I don't wanna be the only one up here making noise. <laughs> and therefore it has a shape. And it's a shape urban throne, like the boy tossing the stone on the water. Yeah, it's gonna create shape when you throw it, or cast, or thought, or mumbled, or moaned. And shape they do indeed, as Masaru Emoto has shown. Who knows who Masaru Emoto is? Okay, no, his picture's coming up soon. I got one. Yes, thank you. Got somebody who's paying attention. Well done. He's shown this. The proof is the fruit from the seeds that are sown. Water crystals. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Water crystals are formed. So, what of you? And what of me? And what of the most vulnerable of humanity? If sounds weaken with distance, oh, there he is. Take note, you should do some research. If you don't know him, do some research. Write his name down. If sounds weaken with distance, do they? Do sounds weaken with distance? Yes. Do sounds weaken with distance? Yes. Okay. And since I am closest to me, then what can be more shaping than self-identity? Agree? This is vulnerable humanity right here. We have to be careful how we speak to our elders and our youth. You are not white. You are not Negro, black, or colored. It took noble Drew Ali to teach. But if we would just study, study, and study, we would know the parts of speech. To be a black or a white is irrational. Yeah? It's absurd. A human being is at least a noun and a verb. It's definitely not adjectives. <laughs> Here we go. Water in the body. Did we see the water crystals that took shape just now? Are you paying attention to me and the slides? Thank you. We're made up of mostly water. You can see children are made up of more than us, according to thoughtco. Blank. <laughs> so, please say what you mean, but don't be mean when you say. 
if you don't know what I'm saying, begin etymology today. Anybody know what etymology is? Yes? Can we get an answer? The study of the origin of words. Thank you. Negro, black, colored, adjectives, definitely not nouns or verbs. So, please cast loving spells. Loving spells. This is the shape of water when evil is spoken to it. That's the spell evil, evil as a spell, according to Masaru Emoto. So please cast loving spells, like thank you, and love. And on hateful speech, keep tight, tight lids. And so, let's now end this with that and these two nice black kids. Thank you. Oops, he's tall. Thank you so much, Frankie. Um, anybody has any questions? Oh, right there at the back. Oh, that's a good question. Love. Love is my favorite word. Oh, big ups to Stefan for that crest that you saw at the beginning and the end. Yeah, big ups, sjdworld.com. Any other questions? Wait, sorry. Uh, how did you find out about Mr. Emoto? That's a good question, actually. Um, It was probably Facebook or something like that. You know, um, it's a good question. I don't know. I don't know, but it was a while ago. And uh, I found his research very interesting, revealing, telling. Um, do you know of him? You've heard of him? Okay, yeah. Does anybody else, is everyone unfamiliar with Mr. Emoto? Because I've used him in my presentation. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm not sure if Emoto is his first or his last name. Sometimes the Japanese, is his last name? Okay, I'm not sure. The Japanese switch it up sometimes. Um, but he's, uh, some people are calling him a pseudoscientist. Either way, he did these experiments in which groups of people would speak words onto water, and then he'd freeze the water. Once the water was frozen, they'd look, under, uh, look at it under a microscope and see how the crystals formed after this, this experiment had taken place. And I only put a couple of pictures up there. You're really encouraged to do the research and the study yourself. I, I really try to encourage that. Um, but yeah, a couple of them were heavy metal music, which was all crazy looking. And um, Mozart's symphony number something, number whatever, <laughs> which was beautiful. Evil, which was ugly, if you want to call it that, and thank you, which was beautifully symmetrical. So, I mean, that little, little experiment showing that is actually telling a lot, you know, especially how words create shape. And if they create shape in water, and we are mostly water, then what is that doing to us? Thank you, Frankie.